This meeting is being recorded. Thanks to that. So uh, hi, everybody. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for, for taking the time to attend this open house during this busy week. Uh, this is an open house on the site plan control from 138 forward. Um, so I'll start with some housekeeping. Uh, the presentation is going to be recorded and posted on the Kitchissippi Ward YouTube by the end of this week. Um, anyone who didn't make this meeting can review the recording there. So if you'd like to pass it on, let them know if they were worried about not making it. Um, it'll be there. You can email us for, for that recording, or you can just go on YouTube and look up Kitchissippi Ward, open up our channel. It'll be the first thing there if it's up already. And if not, just check again. Um, and if you're at this meeting, you can review the meeting afterwards on there. Um, that being said, you know, as it's uh, a smaller meeting, we're not going to be relying on the Zoom Q&A function to take questions. Um, I just ask that you either write your question in the chat or raise your hand using the raise hand function if you'd like to speak in the Q&A. Um, you can find the raise hand function. I'll, I'll say it just in case anyone isn't used to it, but raise hand functions on the bottom right panel, uh, right side of the panel in the bottom. And uh, since this is being recorded, if you don't feel comfortable being on video during this, you absolutely don't have to be. Uh, and you can stop your video on the bottom left side of the uh, panel, and then that way you won't show up. Since we're recording it, you might not feel comfortable putting it up. Totally fine. You can shut that off if you prefer. Um, so to go over the format of this meeting, uh, we'll start with a short presentation from the applicant team about 15, 20 minutes uh, to go over the proposed application. And after this, the rest of the meeting is just gonna be a, a Q and A with the residents. And we've got the lead planner on the file here, uh, Jean-Charles Renault, who can take questions, especially on the city side of things and on the zoning, um, if any of those kinds of questions come up. So um, I'll do the spiel on uh, what this site plan control is for. Uh, excuse me if you recognize this from uh, the application summary. So this is a proposed site plan control application. The new two-story uh, single family dwelling. Uh, nope. It's, it's a proposal for a four-story 18-unit apartment dwelling, which will be demolishing the two-story single family dwelling on Forward Avenue, uh, which would include 10 two-bedroom units, one, one, four one-bedroom units and four bachelor units. And the proposed development does not require any relief from the zoning bylaw and adheres to all zoning provisions. And the zoning here is uh, R4UD. So mostly we are here to review the technical details of the proposal and ask questions about it. Um, our office would be happy to facilitate any further, less formal meetings with any of the neighbors on the site if you'd like to in the future. Uh, you can reach out to us for that. Um, but with all that said, <laughs> Okay, I won't take any more time, and I'll uh, pass the presentation over to uh, Kirsten with the uh, applicant team to uh, lead us off into the presentation. So, Kirsten, uh, the floor is yours. Thanks, Jeff. Um, I'm just uh, going to let you know that John Moser, who is our uh, COO and uh, Vice President of Planning at GABA, is trying to get into the meeting right now. He's having some trouble, so I'm trying to troubleshoot him on, on our end. Um, in the meantime, uh, Tan and Susan are architects. Uh, Susan and Tan, are you guys set to jet on kind of giving an overview of the site plan and what have you? Okay, awesome. I'm going to turn it over to both of you. And then, um, Steph, I'm not sure if Susan will need um, permissions to share her screen, but I think they have something to share. You should be good to go. Okay. Thank, thank you very much, Kirsten. And thank you, uh, Steph. And, uh, Councillor Leeper and JC, I've worked with before quite a bit. Um, and this is my assistant, Pan. So I'll just do a quick uh, overview of uh, the location. Um, uh, it's it's great, great spot, close to the river, close to Penny's Pasture, close to Wellington. It's just amazing uh, spot. Um, yeah, so and then as we move closer into the site, you can see the larger scale development going on around this location and quite a bit of potential in this area for development. And there we, we get fairly close to the site. Now I'll just um, show you the plan. Here we have our proposed site plan. It's uh, pretty straightforward, a main entrance, and you'll see from the floor plan, 
there's a, an exit and access for bicycle parking and garbage close to the front. Uh, so this is just the basement plan and there's an elevator in there that's coming in from the entrance. You go half a floor up and or to any of the other stories and the, uh, the exit is here and bicycle parking close to the front and garbage right there. So that's the ground floor, second floor, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, it's still pretty much under development right now. Um, and here's some potential elevations that we're working on and that we've submitted. Um, next, we have some 3D views. This is from a distance showing the massing of neighboring buildings. You can see that it's fitting quite nicely in the massing. This is a, a new development that's just, I guess it's under construction now. I saw the preliminary stages of it when they were digging. And then we're back to getting a bit closer at the, the project in the massing stage, and then a bit closer here. Um, this, this property has been, I think, gone for minor variants as well, or it's been severed to create a project uh, somewhat like this, or it looks like from the site plan, they've, they've had it severed. That's, I, I just saw that on our survey plan. And this is the, the view from another direction. So that I think is, uh, um, so yeah, and we, we wanted to mention that we are applying now for some affordable housing granting for about 30% uh, affordable housing, six units, and uh, it'll be 20% efficient, more efficient than the building code requires. I think that's pretty well straightforward. Can I answer any questions? I don't have any, but um, Kirsten, I was just going to ask if John's still having trouble. Um, I'm not sure if there's more to your presentation, so I don't want to dive into the, the Q&A too quick, and not give us a chance to recuperate. Uh, you're muted, Kirsten. Sorry. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, I, I believe he is still struggling um, to get in, but um, there there isn't uh, much more to our presentation. We just wanted to give a, a kind of a simple layout of the, the site plan and kind of the massing here um, and just yeah. hear if there was any questions or comments from the community. Awesome. Okay. We'll can, dive right can, we, can we go back a couple slides back to the um, uh, floor plan? Oh, where did the floor plans go? Well, I guess I closed them. Oh dear. Sorry about that. There they are. I guess I closed them. Nope. So the waste is on the north side? Is that, that's the, that's the new one. Oh, sorry. I'm afraid I, I closed it. What's the one from before? Oops, sorry. You should be seeing all my emails. It's all good. Oh, there, is that it? There it is. There it is. It was hiding. Oh. No, not this one. Okay. Yep. This one here. Yeah. yeah. There we go. So one more. There we go. There we go. Is that the garbage room? This is the garbage right here. Right there. Okay. So yeah. so that's on the north. That's on the north side. That's right. Yes. Okay. And how do people access it? From the they outside? Go, yes, they do have to go outside, right? So they have to go outside to take it. So they take the garbage up and down in the elevator, do they? There's no garbage chute. We should have a door here. Not at this point, no. We're still working out the internal design. Okay. 
Yeah. Okay, so then you'll run the garbage because there's, mm-hmm. you're going to be running the garbage out to the front of the street. Is that correct? That's yes. right. Yep, there's a path here. There's a path there. Okay. So when it comes to snow clearing, where are you going to be storing your snow? It could be stored back back here. Okay. Mm-hmm. On behind behind the, the walkway that's going out to the street. So these two doors are for bicycles. This door is the, for the garbage and this is the stairs. So it will have to be cleared at least to this point. The snow will have to be pushed to the back. Well, and the fire escape is there too. So it's got to, you got to leave that cleared too, right? That's one of the problems oh, that we have. This, that's this door, sorry. That's this door is the fire exit is here. So that's what I'm saying. Okay. You have to be behind here. Okay, so Jeff, just something that we're really finding a lot with all these little R4 apartment blocks coming up is where do they store the snow? Because you can't dump it out on the street because people are gonna bitch, you can't put it on the sidewalk. Um, this is one of the things that, that you know, if we ever do some kind of a review of the R4, yep. um, we really gotta think about either we need more snow clearing, more regular snow clearing, or they have to be able to accommodate the snow somewhere because nobody wants it on their property. Right. Uh, and is the issue just that it goes in the street? I mean, I know like my, you know, most of the streets in the ward, the, the snow goes on the street and it gets narrowed down to one lane until there's a um, uh, snow clear, uh, snow removal operation, right? Um, but it's certainly, yeah. Just keep it in the back of your head. I'm sure you have no room in there, but yeah, yeah. no, sorry. <laughs> there the O train will not be running between Pimacy and uh Herdman until further notice, uh, starting tomorrow. Oh. Yeah, stuff's getting real out there. Anyways, um <laughs> uh, the... trees. Can we right. talk about okay. trees? Yes, please. Uh how many are coming down? None. None. So uh, I will uh go back to the, there's no trees on the site right now. Uh, I think there's one that you're protecting. There's one that we're protecting? At the northwest corner. Right now is one existing tree. um, And um, from the the stump to the the corner on the northwest of the new building are gonna be 11 meters. And the diameter of the tree is 0.4. So that being 0.4, you need to put a fan around within four meters. But since we do the new building, the new building is distant from the tree at 11 meters. That means we don't need to do any tree protection. So what tree are you talking about then? This is the tree back here, this back corner. This is on our property. Because I just had a quick look at the uh, EA and it did mention a tree. Um just to maybe check in again, uh, does John need the invitation resent or anything? Because um, I'm, I'm happy to work on that in the background. It, it helps while we uh, bring up some some landscape plans or anything like that to, to look yeah, at. Yeah, you could you could try and resend it. I think he was getting hum, hung up on the code. Um, and uh, I let him know what the code explicitly was. And he said it still won't let him in. So So maybe a new invite will do the trick. Yeah, I'll do that while while um, we discuss the the landscape plans. Thank you. And of course, you know, if anyone wants to to jump in with with more questions, you know, we can we can forego a, a raised hand function in this case. Uh, maybe while we're, while we're doing trees, if if you look at the site plan, looks to me like they've got two trees on forward and three in the back. Uh, but if you go to the landscape plan, 
there's one tree in the back. It actually looks like it'll be a nice patio area with a big tree back there, but no trees on the front. Uh, and I, I noticed that you went to uh, considerable lengths, you know, the, citing all of the guidelines from the transportation oriented development uh, guidelines. And there's uh, guideline number 62 has trees by sidewalks. And I'm wondering whether or not uh, you can actually put some trees in the front of this property to create some shade for uh, all of the people that have to walk up and down Forward Avenue. We have got uh, two new trees here. Yeah. Um, Show on the landscape plan, unless I'm not reading it properly. Because I, I noticed that in a lot of your rent, your your visual representations, there were there was one tree on the front. Um, and then one in one of them there were two trees. When I got the landscape plan, I couldn't find any trees at all. You can give me the title. I, I'm frame. I didn't have the. Uh, the landscape drawing open. Um, I might be able to find it if, if I can share my screen. L100. I'm looking at it yeah. right now. L100. Yeah, you can. You can, or if you want to share your screen and um, I once just I have get this. find it now. <laughs> <laughs> like everybody else. Uh, I'll, I can pull it up actually after I just send this this uh, this quick email to to John, um, and hopefully Is that it? works. Here I've got it. I've got it off, off the website. Um, what do I have to do to share screen? Uh, here I'll just take. Uh, I'll I'll save us all <laughs> the time of all the fun stuff that comes with Zoom, and I'll I'll share my screen real fast. I have it now. You do? Okay. Oh, sure, I got to share. share. I have it if, you, if I can share it. Yeah, go uh, go ahead, Susan. Well, try not to get too many computing, Susan. Um, uh, well, in that case, time. I won't try to share mine. <laughs> <laughs> It'll still probably go up, but. You can tell this is a community group, right? <laughs> there we go. No, that's yeah, the site plan right. again. Here it is right here. I'll just download it. Um, there we go. So I see an AL1, which looks like a Saskatoon berry bush. AL, AL1. Yeah, these are all small scrubs, shrubs and plants and trees. The one on the back, as I said, I mean, it looks like it might, you know, if you get the tree that size could be quite nice in that patio. And generally that helps, you know, with the, the heat islands and all the rest of that stuff. But the, this on the street, that would be really useful to have some, some shade. And as I said earlier, the, the TOD guidelines, uh, number 62 or 52 makes a, a point of the value of having shade trees along walk, walkways. We'll uh, bring that up with our landscape architect. Okay, we'd prefer to see trees. Okay. Than, than bush. Along the side. Yeah, along the front. I just, uh, Jeff, as, as a general point, being as uh, Laurie's brought up the notion <laughs> of, of snow and what do you do with it? Um, if you do get to reviewing these R4 things, that's a pretty skimpy amount of land real estate on the front of these buildings and that setback for, you know, living up to all of the green space aspirations uh, that uh, that are in the transportation plan and elsewhere. I absolutely agree. So the R4 rules, I mean, those are already a year old or so now, right? Um over the course of the next couple of years, I think staff will be continuing to look at, you know, how are the rules working? And we'll start getting an opportunity to um, start pushing those back a little bit. So, uh, and I forgive me, I haven't looked carefully at this one, but what is the setback on this one from the, uh, from the front wall to the property line? 
It's exactly what R4 allows. I think it's a meter and a half. Something like yeah. That. So, you know, that, that does need to get pushed back. Uh, there, it just doesn't allow for any street trees. These folks are compliant with the zoning, uh, but, you know, we're, we're seeing, um, uh, we're seeing the result of what the zoning allows and it's, it's not enough room for trees. Well, even for an amateur like me, it was pretty obvious that you weren't going to get anywhere close to what, uh, you know, the 15 minute neighborhood uh, sales pitch and uh, transportation, you know, coverage and walks and all that. It's, and here's it. But anyway, well, it would be interesting to see what you can do. I'm, I'm speaking to the developers now. Maybe if you can help us out here, it would be appreciated. You might even be a pilot. Maybe we can figure out what you can do in a meter and a half that will help the, help the community. Uh, you know, and if there's room to shift your building back uh, another half a meter or something, that might help too. Um, ventilation, um, when it comes to exhaust, uh, is the HVAC, everything's going to be on the roof? It's, yeah. Yeah, it, it'll be in each unit yeah. and then condensers on the roof. Yeah, there'll be uh, condensers on the roof and then there'll be a, like um, a unit in each, um, an air handler in each unit. will have its own air handler. Okay, inside the unit? Yes. Yeah, okay. They won't be like hideous things sitting outside that rattle no. and shake next to their no, neighbors? It would, it would okay. be on the roof, any condenser. Yeah. Okay, and bird safe windows. Okay. What's your plan for that? Um, I guess the, we could uh, put on a, a film, a bird safe uh, film. Okay. Good. Uh, Roy, anything for you? No, I was uh, primarily fixated on on the on the trees, and I was quite struck actually when I got into those uh, TOD guidelines. Um, I mean, I, I noticed that uh, the developer cited any any number of them because it's within 600 meters of uh, Tunney. So I, it uh, stimulated me to go back and look and see what all was in there. And so I, I was, uh, as I say, I was. Uh, actually pleased to see that they had considered uh, trees over pedestrian areas and number 52. Just a question of how do you make it work? And if uh, we could get some help from, from the developers on this, it'd be appreciated. Yeah, it's a bit tough with Mechanicsville because everything's always been built close to the street. So they get the, the average of the two buildings on either side. And if they're close to the street already, yeah. they always get Is that. Any, any potential for a city uh, trees on city property. Um, actually, during this conversation, I, I, I just sent an email to the uh, the forester just to follow up on her comments that she sent me earlier, just to get her impression on uh, the type of trees that are proposed on the plans and uh, uh, open it up to her suggestions as to <clears throat> perhaps a, a, a better suggestion if if one exists, something that might strive a bit more in, in an urban environment. Um, and, and these, uh, whatever comments I receive back from her will be sent to the applicant, but uh, yeah, we, we'll, I'll, I'll have a chat with the forester on this. Yeah, could you share them with us as well? Because like, we face this frequently. Um, it'd be nice to have some professional advice on what's possible in our neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Sure, I'll make a note of it. Skinny yeah. 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 Well, I just even, even I'm just looking at this plot. I mean, on one side, you've got garbage and bicycles there. I'm not sure what's on the other side. It might be a little, or elbow room for a tree right on the corner. Um, you know, like on that front corner, it, it's, anyway, we're, we're trying to create an, an, an environment to the extent we can where it's comfortable and to walk and, and be out in the summertime and get as much canopy. There's supposed to be 40% canopy in the neighborhood. It's pretty tough, you know, <laughs> when you've got buildings that are built edge to edge on the lots. So uh, any idea when you're going to start construction? Do you have a construction schedule yet or you're still working things out? As soon as we can get the permits and the approvals, uh, construction would start. That's the plan. Have you figured out a construction staging area? It's pretty tight in here, right? 
This is close to the lane as well, right, Lori? The what would that be? Is there a laneway that's near this, or am I confusing this with another one three? Uh, no, nope, there's a lane there's behind. A lane. Yeah, it's yeah. an unmaintained yeah. lane. Yeah, yeah. There's okay. also, there is a tree in the middle of the lane, mm -hmm. <laughs> and we like it there. <laughs> yes. Actually, okay, I just leave all your construction staging area as soon as possible because uh, it's tight in here for space and finding anything. And uh, not much parking, no parking, no parking for your residents. But we make sure that you're absolutely clear. Or visitors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And no home care, nothing. And including your your trades and your construction workers. Of course, mm -hmm. you might be able to arrange something with Tunnies right now, but uh, so the, a big issue. The, um, the laneway at the back, I, I assume it's accessible from the neighbor um, because it was part of their plan to have parking. So they are, they are using the plant, like in their proposal, they're using this laneway to get parking into the back of their project. Yeah, so they are. Mm -hmm. assume that that it'll be at least accessible up to the the tree yep i'm not sure what kind of tree that is roy you kind of walk that area do you know no and i i don't recall right now because in fact the neighbors have got it kind of fenced off it's a little hard to get it get through there right um, from what I can recall, I think you can access the lane um, via Parkdale. It kind of runs east-west um, between the, the property at 139 Parkdale and the property at 138 Forward. Um, you can actually drive in from Parkdale yeah, you'd have to and access this that, lane area. You'd have to deal with the person that owns that property to go off Parkdale. That's not public. I think right. it's the same guy, though. Eh? It is the same, the same people. So there you go. The same people. We can access it from the back. Oh, yeah. So you'll probably use 139 as a construction staging area until while you build 138. That's I think right. that's the assumption. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okie doke. And you guys have bicycle parking, but um, if you don't mind reminding us, uh, how many spots have you got again? How many? How many units? So it was a pretty, I think you guys had a 0.5 ratio, but I, I don't want to speak uh, incorrectly on that. 16. Okay, okay nice. Mm -hmm. Of course, most people have now two bikes. So if you had 18 units. Yeah, it's, it's 16 bikes, two tier storage racks. If you want to attract uh, good tenants, have a nice bike room where you can get lots of bikes in. Well, it's it's handy to the front. It's right there. True. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So I said, you see it there. And no access from the inside. No. Okay. We could put a door here. <laughs> So you're going to move, so uh, there's no loading bay, so you're going to move furniture in and out the front door, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And do you anticipate any asbestos in the building? In the no. old building? Oh, demolition, I guess. Um, yeah, demo. It, yeah, it depends exactly how old it is. Like there was a time before asbestos. It looks like quite an old building. Um, there's, there's a the one next to it was the oldest one in Mechanicsville. It was 150 oh, years old. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. I mean, obviously, we'll just do the the hazard report and. Uh, have to take care if there is any, but there, there may not be any given the history, the time when it was built. So there's a hazard report? So will be done. One will be done at, during. Oh, there will be a done? Okay. 
when when construction we have to have one for demolition for sure yes. for sure it's a requirement right okay I yeah, think everybody can, just anticipates it now. Yeah, then we we're always ready to get those uh, those DSRs if, if any of the neighbors, Parkdale News or anything, have uh, some questions with that in the future. Yeah. Okay. Amazing. That's it for me. How about you, Roy? Uh, that's it too. Um, good luck with the project and uh, filling it up with good good tenants. <laughs> Maybe you can let us let the Mechanicsville Community Association put a bulletin up on your bulletin board to let them know that we're here. Yeah. Yep. And they can show up to these meetings too. <laughs> yes. There we go. Forgive me, can I jump in for a sec? Yes. Yep. Okay, and I'm sorry, I lost track of the discussion. Um, it's a no parking building, right? I'm assuming? Yeah, that's absolutely right. no yeah. parking. Yeah. yeah. So um, one of the things that is really, really critical is to let prospective tenants know that there is no parking and that it is virtually impossible to park on the street. Um, there's yeah. no permit parking. Um, it's uh, if your tenants move in with a car, they're going to be calling my office a month later and asking <laughs> me to fix their parking issue. And I'm going to have to tell them I can't. So it's just really important to be upfront with tenants right off the bat. I know that your site plan condition is going to have something in there that says you have to include it in the lease that there is no parking, but um, it's really important. We just see too many landlords who tell people, oh, you can park on the street. Uh, not here, you can't. <laughs> so for, uh, for, for your future tenants happiness, um, uh, they'll want to know that upfront. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Is that what you were going to say, JC? Uh, yep, Councillor Leeper stole my thunder. Oh shit! Uh, oh no, shoot! I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, yeah, Chase. Exactly. We just got demonetized on YouTube because <laughs> I should not have even. Yeah. <laughs> I should not have even joined tonight's meeting. I apologize. I will step back. A little distracted. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Looking for that new cap. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Okay. I mean, that's it for me. Yeah, I don't think we've got anything else. I mean, you know, we did these site plan controls now just to, to go over the technical details with either you guys or any of the immediate neighbors. So, Lori, I don't know if you want to, you know, let them know there'll be a recording, whoever's potentially near this. So yes. They couldn't make it. I actually anymore. sent them a reminder. I sent Parkdale Muse a reminder tonight, but uh, I didn't hear from them. I'll send them the link. Awesome. I appreciate Thanks. that. <laughs> no problem. I can I can pass it on too. But um yeah, if that's the case, you guys are are making record time for <laughs> an open house, which is all good. Um Kirsten, um, Susan, I don't know if you guys want to finish with anything, but I'll 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 leave it open <laughs> just in case. No, otherwise we can wrap things up. Okay. Uh -huh. Um, from us, uh, Tan and Susan, thanks for the presentation. Uh, John sends his apologies that he wasn't able to find his way into the meeting uh, today, but sometimes that's the way it goes. Um, I'm sure we'll be able to take a look at all your comments um, combined with the comments that are coming back from JC and his team. Uh, and again, thanks everyone for your um, interest in the application. Yeah. Maybe on that note, I can uh, remind people that um, the uh, commenting period uh, ends on uh, February. 21st. Uh, so if ever you're sharing the link to tonight's meeting with anybody else in the community, uh, please uh, remind them of uh, that date. Thank you. And that's sort of a soft deadline, right, JC? You know, get it in early, but... Absolutely. Um, commenting is technically open right up to the time that we make a decision. Uh, but as is uh, always the case, it's uh, sooner is better, just to make mm -hmm. sure that your comments uh, can be incorporated into the proposal. Awesome. Just so no one hears that deadline and, and gets too scared hearing it. Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead, Roy. No, that was that's good. Just made it's the 21st, you said. Did, will mm -hmm. it will it make it I mean you have my my question and query about the, the trees uh, on on the street side. Is, is that do you have enough or do I need to write that down for you? I, I would appreciate an email. Um, because tonight's uh, open house is Councillor Leeper's 
uh, meeting, which is uh, separate from uh, the city uh, side of things. So okay. just oh, to kind fine. of put an order in things and so that I can keep things on in my files, it would be great if you could send me an email. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and that means that the, that the developer gets to be plagued by having, having me reminded every time they come to another stage in the process. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. thank you very much. Awesome. <laughs> Excellent. On that lovely note, thank you everybody for, for coming out and uh, thank you for making the time to come this meeting despite, you know, probably how tired or stressed or anything everyone might be. So, uh... <laughs> Any other news, Jeff? <laughs> no, uh, there's a winter parking ban tomorrow. Oh, remember when that was like a big? That, remember when that was a big thing? It's like, oh yeah, daytime winter parking ban tomorrow. Ah, yeah. It's like now, uh, what? I have no idea. Yeah. We're, we're just so shocked. <laughs> it's uh, no, and I'm just. I've put together a Twitter list of reports.